If you are new to YouTube Studio, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and in this video we're going to be having a look at uh, YouTube Studio which is the area of YouTube where creators can upload their video content and I'm going to talk through all of the different sections of it and maybe highlight a few areas that you uh, may be unfamiliar with and uh, just point out the key ones that you need to make sure you have uh, completed if you want to follow best practices that is uh, when you're starting out on your YouTube journey. So without further ado I'll just go straight over into my screen sharing. So here we are in YouTube and uh, if you've got your account that your, is linked to your YouTube studio then you'll simply go up to the top corner here, click on your icon for your uh, account icon and come down to your YouTube studio and that will bring you into the area where you're going to be uploading your videos. Uh, if you actually click on it, there we go. <laughs> So once that loads up, uh, there you go. By the way, if you haven't uh, watched my one hour challenge video, then um, I don't know whether to recommend it or not. It was a bit of a train wreck in my mind, but I did get it done in the end. So uh, <laughs> you might want to check that one out. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, also, thank you very much to my subscribers because I have finally cracked that uh, initial first little milestone, the small step on the long journey <laughs> over uh, 100 uh, subscribers. So thank you very much to you all <laughs> and I hope you're finding what I'm producing useful and continue to do so and if there is anything that I can do better then please always feel free to let me know. I'll always welcome any uh, suggestions or criticisms or anything <laughs> with open arms. So uh, we're all on this uh, learning journey together at the end of the day. So uh, any comments, questions, or anything like that. In fact, you could go over to my website, takeonetech.io, uh, and uh, let me know there. There's a little uh, chat thing on the website, and then also I've obviously got the contact page as well. So that little uh, yellow button at the bottom right hand side of the website is an area where you can just uh, chat. Uh, but then obviously also use the contact page, get in touch, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but anyway, back to the demonstration. So in uh, YouTube Studio, you've basically got a number of different areas to the uh, studio on the uh, right hand side, a number of different menus. And uh, now for some reason, my mouse wheel has decided, oh, there we go. It was just having to think about it for a while. Decided to stop scrolling there for a while. Uh, so yes, you've got this section here, which is uh, on the right hand side where we've got the dashboard, playlists and things like that. And then, uh, so at the moment we're in the dashboard, which is just basically an overview, a dashboard, funnily enough, <laughs> which uh, usually just has up here your last uh, video that you posted and how it's performing compared to uh, your sort of average performance. Uh, obviously your subscribers and things like that, a list of recent subscribers and a list of videos here and you can see that there's little shortcuts to go to all of your videos or go to all of your subscriber list for those that have made it public um, and then also we've got some general Facebook news on this side as well. Um, up in the top corner is a, or in, up in the top row rather, is a, a sort of menu bar that stays here all of the time. Uh, this allows you to sort of close and hide the, uh, the, the titles of the sidebar uh, like that. Uh, and then over on the right hand side, you've got the create button here where you can actually upload your videos, uh, instigate a live stream or plan a live stream. So if you were to click on this, uh, you can either upload a video, which I'll talk about later, or go live. And go live is a bit misleading there really because you can either go live or it is also where you actually schedule a live stream. So uh, you don't actually go live as soon as you hit that button, so don't worry. <laughs> You're not going to suddenly start broadcasting without realizing it. Now this button over here is not actually part of the usual YouTube. This is actually the TubeBuddy uh, um, menu. <laughs> uh, and so if you sign up to TubeBuddy, which is something I've done a whole nother video about, um, but you can find out more on that video or also go to takeonetech.io slash TubeBuddy. And TubeBuddy is basically a, uh, I, I think of it as my little personal uh, YouTube coach <laughs> that helps me when I'm uploading videos or looking for tags or things like that. And it helps with suggestions. And as I've just shown you, it's got pretty deep integration into YouTube because it sits up there right there in the menu bar. And as we go 
through, you'll notice that it features quite heavily uh, through pretty much every stage of YouTube. So it really is a good, uh, good thing to look at. And the best part is if you have got less than a thousand subscribers, then it's actually half price. And it's only, I think, uh, about $8, just less than $8. So it works out for me about $3.90 a month or something like that, I think, uh, until I hit that thousand <laughs> and then it will go up to eight. But either way, it's a bargain really, because as I say, it really does help to sort of coach you through all the different steps that you need to take when you're uploading videos, searching for uh, keywords, you know, what to do your SEO, search engine optimization on your videos. It can help with all of that as well. But that has its own little menu up here. I won't go into this in full detail because as I say, I made a video about it. So I'll link to the video in the description and I'll put it up in the top corner uh, when I get around to it, which is usually within a day or two after uploading the videos. But basically this has its own secondary menu in here, which is uh, a whole other thing. But I won't talk about that just now because you may not have TubeBuddy. If you have, if you haven't, then I would recommend checking it out and you can get a free trial using my link. Uh, but otherwise, let's return to the actual standard interface. <laughs> So that is the dashboard. The next one down on the menu is the content. And this is where you're going to be uploading your videos. Now, obviously, you may not have anything in there at the moment, but this is where they will all appear once the, once you have uploaded a video. And then from here, once you've uh, uploaded the video, you can always go back in and you can uh, make edits. So you can edit the full details. So if I click on the little pencil there, I'll be able to ed edit the full details. We'll have a look at the details a little bit later. I'll just go through this uh, step by step at the moment to show you the interface. Uh, but that's how you would edit the details. Then you could uh, come down here and check out the analytics. So the statistics on your videos to see how they're performing. You can look at comments on an individual uh, video. Uh, you can also obviously click the link to view it on YouTube to actually go and watch the video. Uh, or you've got some other options here, such as you can uh, edit the title and description. So if you just want to do a quick edit, then you can easily do that from in here. If you want to grab a link to uh, post it anywhere, you can post it, uh, promote it rather. So that'll take you through to advertising uh, or you can download the uh, the video if you've uh, not got a copy or you need to just quickly grab a copy on the go for something then you could do that here or you have the option to delete it so I'll move swiftly away from that one just in case you'll also notice that I've got this little tube buddy thing here as well so there are a lot more actions that you can do uh, that are powered by TubeBuddy related to, as you can see, SEO, scheduling, uh, promotion, and all these sorts of things. You can easily add the little end screens. So at the end of the video where I say, check out these videos coming up next, <laughs> that part is called an end screen. I did a video about how to uh, design your overlays for end screens and how to actually apply those to your videos. So I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But you can easily just apply those, whole, those uh, end screens uh, as a template in terms of the video positioning and things like that. You can do that with uh, TubeBuddy templates as well. So that's a little extra feature for TubeBuddy. You also have a uh, little drop down here to see whether it is a public, private or unlisted video. So public videos are obviously public. Anybody can see them. Unlisted is it's not listed on YouTube, but anybody who you send the link to can see it. Whereas private is only for you or people that you explicitly grant permission to by sending an email uh, to them or add in their email address and they'll get a link that they can click. But otherwise it is entirely uh, private. And then schedule is obviously one that is scheduled that hasn't actually been posted yet. So you can actually change those on a video by video basis here. But otherwise you can just see how they are, um, what their status is. Uh, restrictions is if you have got a copyright strike and this did actually happen to me within my first week <laughs> of uh, it wasn't actually a copyright strike it was a copyright claim I beg your pardon uh, because of some of the music that I was using in my um, videos which was actually perfectly legal it's just that I hadn't gone in and added in the details through Adobe stock but as I say I'll leave a link in because I ended up switching to epidemic sounds uh, so it was a much uh, smoother process to do that and uh, so if if you are starting out and you need to use music in your channel, then guess what? I've got a link for you for that as well. Epidemic Sounds is what I use for all of my music. And basically it's easy. You just go and uh, sign up to uh, them for a free trial. And then after that, it's a monthly fee. And at the moment, I think they've got a special on it. If you pay for a year up front, it's something like $120 for the year, I believe thereabouts. And um, that basically means that you can use any of their tracks on uh, any of your videos or on any of your other social pro pro uh, profiles as well. One profile per social platform, 
you see what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so you can have one YouTube account, one Facebook account, one Instagram account, and so on. And it basically just whitelists your account. So any of the mu music that you use uh, is then uh, perfectly legal and uh, you won't get any issues with copyright. So I can uh, recommend that as well. But back to the demo. And uh, so th this is the restrictions. If there has been a some sort of claim about the copyright, then that would appear here. Then you've also got the date, obviously, the number of views, the number of comments, and then the likes to dislikes. So what's the ratio of people who've liked it to the people who have given it the thumbs down? Uh, so just a few stats here. You can also just click on these to uh, uh, highlight them and learn more about each one. Uh, but then also you can sort the columns by that as well. You can also perform uh, bulk actions as well. So if you were to highlight all of these videos, for example, and then you can do things in here uh, like uh, check categories and things like that and uh, add to different playlists. So if you'd got a load of videos on one particular topic and you just wanted them to, to add them into a particular playlist, you could do that here as well. Uh, when you do eventually get your channel monetized, that would appear in here as well, the monetization status. So uh, if and when I eventually reach that point, I'll uh, update you all with how that looks. Um, and so that would appear in here as well. So We've been in the uploads part of the uh, content section, but there is also a live section. So if I click into the live, then this is where you've got uh, at the top any upcoming live streams that you have scheduled using the uh, create live stream uh, feature, or if you've actually created your live streams within Ecamm Live. So you can actually, I did a video about this as well, how to go live with Ecamm Live. I seem to be just linking to other videos in this video it wasn't intentional it's just that i've covered these things and so i want to give you the, the right information at the right uh, right time <clears throat> excuse me but um yes you can actually schedule your live streams within ecamm live and they will just appear in here as if by magic so these are upcoming live streams i've got my uh, one next week which is about the time i've spent uh, growing my youtube channel in terms of the actual physical time that i spend in in doing this so how much time i spend a day how much time i spend uh doing the videos and all of the sort of management that goes along with it and uh it's, it's not actually that much time <laughs> but uh i'll talk all about that in my uh, next live stream and then the live stream after that is funnily enough going to be exactly 50 days in uh two weeks time, just less than two weeks, it will be exactly 50 time, uh, fifty days until and since I had started my YouTube channel. And I set myself the target of doing 100 videos in 100 days. So that will be exactly halfway through. So I've uh, rather optimistically titled that uh, live stream, 50 days, 50 videos, the story so far. Um, if I haven't hit 50 videos, You've got to call me out on it, do you promise? <laughs> uh, so there we go. And then those are the past live streams. And obviously you can do all of the same things with those videos as you could with your other videos as well. Next, oh, by the way, of course, we've got the TubeBuddy things. I'm not going to go into all of the different TubeBuddy functionality on here because uh, there's loads of it. It's all the way through the interface. If you haven't tried TubeBuddy, uh, I just recommend it once again. Next we come on to playlists. Now there's a little thing about playlists and I'll, I'll come to it a little bit further down the line when we talk about uh, some of the general channel settings because I created ch playlists <laughs> but nobody could see them or at least I hadn't made them visible on my channel page. So I'll have to tell you how to do that as well. But this is where you can have a, uh, a playlist. Uh, so I've got playlists for all of my Ecamm Live videos, some for my quick tips, uh, software reviews, Stream Deck, and so on. And uh, one thing you'll notice is that uh, most of my videos are Ecamm Live videos. It wasn't intentional. When I started this channel, it was gonna be all about how I use my Mac and uh, applications and software reviews and a few gear reviews of the things that I use as well. And generally how I, you know, my, uh, I suppose my productivity workflow on the Mac. It just seems to be that uh, the things that you are most interested and excited in seem to float to the top of the pile. So whilst I've got a massive long list of videos, all of the Ecamm Live ones seem to just be floating to the top recently. And I think it's just because I find it such a delightful program to use. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, I, this is where I've got my different uh, playlists and with all the different videos in that are related to those. And you can have videos that appear in multiple different ones. So you might think, well, there's actually almost as many how-to guides as there are in uh, Ecamm Live. Well, that's because most of the Ecamm Live ones are classed as how-to guides as well. So they're kind of doubling up in there as well. 
Uh, and then Stream Deck, I suppose, is a closer second because that is my uh, favorite device at the moment. So there's uh, there's a few in there as well, but it's still uh, lagging somewhat behind Ecamm Live. But anyway, this is where you would see all the of these uh, playlists. And again, you can make some of these public or not, and you can edit them and you can view them on YouTube. And again, we've got these uh, uh, TubeBuddy plugins as well. So I'll uh, leave that for the TubeBuddy uh, video. Next, we have analytics. Now, when you first start out, you won't actually have uh, a full suite of analytics because it won't uh, have had time to actually process. So here is my the last 28 days, uh, 3,137 views. Uh, not really that many, is it, actually? <laughs> when you think about it, the number of videos that I've put out, uh, it's averaging around about, I suppose, over just over 100 per video, something like that. But you can see that it has come up recently. So I wouldn't worry too much about these. And uh, I recently watched a video with, uh, it was Doc Rock interviewing Tom Buck, and he said that he used to obsess over the numbers in the beginning and uh, thought that once he reached some magical number, he would stop obsessing over them. But actually, it isn't the case. You're still always looking at them. And you do look at them. It's important to because um, you do want to know that what you're doing is working in a way. You know, if you have something that is, uh, you know, it doesn't get any interest. I like to look at how different videos have performed in case in terms of how many views, the average watch time and stuff like that, because it tells you basically what your viewers want to see, doesn't it? If you've got videos that lots of people watch and like and comment on, then that's the content that they want. And so I'm intending to be very much sort of viewer driven in terms of the content I'm producing. I'm not just going to stubbornly uh, make stuff that nobody wants to watch. So yes, this is where you can have a look at your views, your watch time. Uh, incidentally, if you are bothered about monetization of your channel, then the magic numbers here are 1000 subscribers and 4000 hours of watch time. Uh, and that enables you to become uh, monetized on YouTube, uh, though you're not going to become a millionaire just by reaching that point. There's still a lot more work to do. <laughs> and you need to actually get some consistent views up and uh, watch time up after that fact as well. But that is the threshold for you to be able to actually apply for that. But I'll show you uh, where we can uh, have a look at that a little bit later because YouTube does that actually tell you about it. So uh, yeah, here you can also see subscribers. So how my subscribers have changed over time and then uh, yeah, different things. So average view count in the past seven days and so on. It also ranks your top videos and how many views they've had. So look at that. I have had one video that has had a thousand views and my next highest has only had 175. So that tells me something. That was my Stream Deck 5.0 software update. And so it may make me think, and it has done, <laughs> what is the reason for that one outperforming? And I do kind of know, really, because I made that literally before even Elgato released their Stream Deck 5.0 software <laughs> video. So I was quite quick um, out of the gate with that one, really. Uh, I also had a hashtag in the title. I don't know if that made a difference, but because my uh, posts get cross-posted to uh, Instagram and Twitter, or rather Twitter and Facebook, um, as sort of not native posts, but with the, the title and some of the description uh, comes out in that as well, then having a hashtag in the actual title meant that I had that hashtag in my uh, uh, social post. I'm not telling you that this is a uh, hack or it works or anything like that. I'm just uh, thinking out loud to you right now on the camera. <laughs> But that is something that I did differently. And uh, so I'm guessing that there was a lot of people searching for that. And I did also notice that uh, a lot of my views for that came just totally organic search traffic for people searching for Stream Deck. So that's why it is quite kind of interesting. You don't want to overthink it. I'm not bothered about how many subscribers I've got per se. Uh, but watching things like this, I think helps you to uh, sort of uh, move your channel forward and learn from it as long as you don't take it too seriously. Um, my uh, my little daughter, <coughs> excuse me, I mentioned this on my live stream the other day, but my little daughter, she kept coming in and asking me how many boos I'd got, meaning thumbs down. <laughs> and uh, she's wondered if I've ever had any. And then the day that I had my first boo <laughs> was, uh, was quite Quite a shock to her. She was thinking, oh, who is it? Who is it who's giving me a thumbs down? But I explained, you don't need to worry about things like that. You can't please everybody all of the time. <laughs> so this is where you can have a look on a video by video basis. And incidentally, uh, you can also go in and look at a bit more information. So at the top, we've got an overview, but then we've also got the reach. It will tell you the uh, uh, various other things, such as the number of impressions, the click-through rate, uh, the number of views, unique viewers, and so on. And again, you just click on each of these and it'll update the graph for this to show you uh, how things are going. Uh, traffic types. 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, you've got browse features, so people searching on YouTube, uh, YouTube search, obviously, people just typing in things and finding your uh, videos, so 21% of my traffic came from people finding me through search, uh, external sources, so linking from outside, uh, suggested videos that pop up in people's feeds when they're scrolling on YouTube, then YouTube has suggested it, and that's what I've got uh, that from, uh, and from different channel pages or for other sources. So uh, this is quite an interesting one. I quite like this. Uh, this is impressions and how they led to watch time. So this is how many times my videos were put into people's streams. <laughs> uh, so 31%. So this is this 50% uh, from YouTube recommendation uh, of my content. So this is basically these two here. It's the browse features plus YouTube search. So my uh, videos have been suggested 31,000 times. Uh, 5.4% of people who have seen those videos have actually clicked through. Uh, we'll, we'll wait to see if that's uh, good or bad. Um, but obviously, you know, people look at all sorts of different factors where the, when they're deciding what to click on. Um, but that is one number that might want to think about when you're thinking about, uh, particularly, I suppose, thumbnails. You know, is it, uh, is it something that people are likely to click on? That would be the metric to look at if you're worried about that or want to improve upon that. Uh, views from impressions, so the total number of views, and then the average view duration. Now this is a bit, uh, you know, some of my videos are quick tips that are a minute or two long, uh, and then I did one video that was four and a half hours long. So, you know, average duration, you've got to sort of take that with a pinch of salt, I think, really. Uh, but just tell you at least how long people are staying on your site, on your videos. Uh, but like I say, it does depend on how um, how long your videos are, doesn't it? But you'll have to judge that for yourself. The next one is uh, the total watch time. So it's telling me overall how many hours have been watched of my videos based purely on the suggestions from uh, YouTube. So I quite like that little graphic. Uh, and then also the uh, source that comes from playlists and uh, not, not had many from playlists, but uh, I'll come to maybe why that is because I only uh, sort of probably started using them recently. Uh, but as I say, I'll come to that later. Then we've got external sources. So I've got a lot of my uh, watch watches have come from uh, YouTube. Uh, not from YouTube, from Facebook. <laughs> and uh, then we've got other like Google search and things like that. Uh, and then uh, suggested video. So it's showing me which of my videos have been uh, suggested. And uh, yeah, it's that one that Stream Deck 5.0 software update happened to be the best one. So if you are uh, making tech um, videos, then there's a little tip. <laughs> Hashtag stream, point stream deck 5.0 seems to be doing quite well at the moment. Uh, and then again, traffic sources from YouTube search, stream deck 5.0. Look at that. It's the highest search term. And I've put, you know, quite a lot of keywords and things like that. TubeBuddy helps me with my keywords. So uh, that is certainly, uh, so certainly something to point out that, yeah, that's getting quite a lot of uh, traction these days. And the next one was uh, Shure MV7. That was one of the first videos I did, actually, which was all about this microphone, my Shure MV7, where I did a sort of review after two months of use. And, and uh, yeah, that seemed to have quite a lot of uh, traction as well in terms of people searching for it. Uh, I suppose with a lot of my videos being Ecamm Live, the Ecamm Live community is large and active, uh, but there are probably uh, is a much larger community of Stream Deck users and uh, with there being overlap with things like OBS and other platforms and then also microphones for uh, it's not just live streaming, but then also uh, podcasts and things like that. So it sort of makes sense the way uh, the uh, the results that I'm getting. But as I say, I only look at them to uh, maybe give me some guides as to things that I maybe want to concentrate on later, but I don't take them to heart too much. <laughs> so the next one is engagement. The next section is engagement. And this is uh, yeah, the watch time. And again, it's just showing you how this is changing over time. So I do seem to be getting a slow, slowly ramping up in terms of in terms of engagement, uh, average view dura duration, although that happens to be just down at the moment, but that could be because, you know, I posted a four and a half hour video uh, not long ago, uh, but then more recent videos have been a bit shorter. So again, don't take it too seriously. Uh, key moments for audience retention. Now this is uh, interesting because it does tell you uh, when people sort of switched on and off in the video. And uh, yeah, it shows you a sort of chart of when people watched and when they stopped watching. So uh, obviously you've got people dropping out almost immediately. And that's because I guess I'm hoping <laughs> it's because when I start my videos, I always start with, if you want to X, Y, Z, 
then this video is for you. So I'm hoping that people just come into my video and then they think, oh no, that isn't what I want and they leave because I don't want people watching if they're not actually interested in the content. So I'm hoping that that little spike is my little introduction doing its job. Of course, the other option is it's people coming really wanting to know the information and they say, this guy doesn't look good. <laughs> I'm not interested in listening to this joker. <laughs> that is, of course, the other option, but that's fair, fair enough. Everyone can have their own opinions and uh, can't please everyone, as we say. So, uh, so yeah, that shows then how it, it does uh, trail off over the, uh, the course of the video. So, uh, as I say, this is on a video by video basis. So it's uh, kind of interesting to watch as well. Again, we've got the top videos and we've also got the top videos by end screen, which is interesting because that shows uh, people who have watched your videos and then they've clicked on the little uh, end screens that you've got. So if you are changing those up and you are trying different things in your end screens, then this is a great place to find out which ones are working and uh, which ones sort of entice people to click on and watch more of your videos because uh, you know, you are at, at the end of the day, you want people to watch your content, don't you? <laughs> it's not just to make them to keep them on YouTube and uh, maybe watch them later with your grandchildren. <laughs> it is to uh, give this content out to the world and for people to watch it. So you do want people to actually click on your end screens and go to watch more content. So that is that. And the next one is the top end screen element types. Now I mentioned this in my uh, video all about end screens, which as I've said, I'll link to in the description. But you basically, the little videos that you have at the end, or sorry, the little uh, links that you have at the end where you say, coming up next, check out some more of these videos. You can either link to a specific video where you choose the video, or you can link to a video which is just basically YouTube decides which one is best for the viewer. So I always have one of those on because obviously the YouTube algorithm knows more about my individual viewers than I certainly do. So that's the why I always have that one at the top of the, uh, the, the two that I have on my end screen. So that's basically YouTube is just going to take a video and they're going to place it there that they think that that viewer will want to watch. And so as you can see, the uh, that gets the highest number of click throughs, which uh, makes sense because it's the video that YouTube thinks that my viewers most wants to watch. The next one is a playlist. So I then select the one, the playlist for the bottom. So where uh, the, on my end screen, it's the best for the viewer at the top. And then the second one down is always a playlist. And I always have the playlist that is most related to the video that they've just watched. So if they found me because of Ecamm Live uh, and watching an Ecamm Live video, then I obviously direct them to the Ecamm Live playlist. Uh, so that's how that works. And then also I've got a subscribe button that pops up on the end as well. Uh, and that is getting a slightly lower uh, click-through rate. Now that could be because you've got 20 seconds at the end of every video uh, where you can place these elements and you can have up to four videos and a subscribe button uh, or sort of video windows actually because you can also add links to external sites once you get a certain number of uh, uh, followers uh, but at the moment I just only use the videos and the playlist. Um, but the subscribe button I actually have coming up slightly later because if you think about my end screen, if you've actually watched one of my videos before, <laughs> it's something like this. So I put this up and you'll see that the videos come up here. So this one would be the best video for the viewer. This one would be the playlist and then the subscribe comes up about five seconds later. And so that is why it makes perfect sense that there would be fewer people clicking on the subscribe because some people just think it's the end of the video already. I want that next video and they click it without waiting for the full outro. Uh, so I can't blame them for doing that. <laughs> so that is the uh, end screen elements and how you can have a look at that. And the cards is basically in your videos. You can simply add in uh, sort of chapter markers into the video. And the way you do that is really simple. You just add it into the description and uh, you just put them in a list, one line after another. And you start with zero colon zero zero and call it whatever, introduction or whatever. And then you just type in the timestamps in minutes uh, or in minutes and seconds rather. So if the first one was at one minute 30, you just write one, one colon 30 and then write the name of the chapter or the, uh, the, the, uh, the timestamp, the card, <laughs> and, uh, and then just write a list down and then they would magically just appear in your timeline on your video and people can click through onto them. And they also work quite well for SEO, search engine optimization. So if you have got specific chapters in your video, I don't know if you've ever searched for anything on Google uh, where you've maybe searched for a particular topic or something and it's come up with a video 
but it isn't the whole video it's magically just sort of highlighted a proportion of a video and you click on the link in the top of the Google search and then it takes you to the middle of a YouTube video and you watch the section well that's because it has chapter markers in them so it is quite important to go and put those in now I don't always get them in at the uh, at the beginning I usually go back and put them in afterwards because as I say I do all of these things in one take there is no editing so I don't actually make notes as I'm going along it would probably ruin my flow if I kept thinking right I'm going to talk about cards now so what time is it 29 minutes 49 I'll write that down it would kind of ruin my flow wouldn't it so I actually have to go back and watch these videos again I know I think of that watching myself on YouTube it's quite uh, quite shocking really I don't uh, I don't enjoy it but fortunately there is double speed so I usually watch them back at double speed and get it over and done with but I get those times for me to be able to go and write in the timestamps but yeah I do have to actually watch them back so I have to find the time to to do that uh, but I recommend doing it because it does help with search engine optimization so that is analytics the next one we come down to is comments that's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've missed one out there. Let me go back to analytics. Too trigger happy. Uh, we've got audience as well. And uh, this is going to tell you all about your demographics. So here you can see my demographics is the number of returning viewers versus the number of new viewers. Uh, and then you've also got the number of unique viewers. So we've got a chart of that. And then the number of subscribers. So how that is changing over time as well. And then also uh, when viewers are on YouTube. So it will tell us in your own time zone what time people are most watching your videos. So it seems that uh, midnight on Wednesdays is the most popular time for my videos apparently. But I'm in Thailand and uh, most of my viewers as you can see are in the United States. So that is 40% of my viewers are in the US and the rest are spread over everywhere else. And uh, I'm in Thailand, but only 0.8% of my viewers are in Thailand. And I'm guessing, I'm just guessing, that might be my daughter. <laughs> she is probably my Thailand uh, audience because <laughs> she does go in and just have a look at them and usually comes and laughs to me about them, my little nine-year-old, uh, Jasmine. So um, that is interesting though, isn't it? Because if you know when people are watching your videos, then it can tell you when you might want to do things like live streams or things like that. Um, and uh, incidentally, whenever I do post about my live streams, I always tend to put it in Eastern Standard Time uh, just because it is a US time zone. But that is why, if you, in case you were wondering why I uh, specify it in terms of the Eastern Standard Time when I'm in Thailand. Well, it's because my daughter is usually tucked up in bed whenever I do a live stream because I do them at four o'clock in the morning, uh, which works out well for US time zones. Anyway, <laughs> that is a little bit of an interesting insight into geography and uh, timing. Uh, and then it also shows you what percentage of my videos are watched by subscribers versus non-subscribers. Uh, and then also subtitles, how many people watch with subtitles and how many people watch uh, without. So 94% without, but interestingly, a lot of people I say a lot of people. <laughs> it's 5%, but it's quite high, really, if you think about it. Five out of every 100 people have watching, are watching my videos with subtitles. Now, at the moment, I'm still being a little bit lazy because I allow YouTube to do all of my subtitles for me, my captions. Um, but I am going to do a video about uh, adding in these using another service, uh, which I'll talk about in that video. But there is a way that you can upload your own, and there's an easy way that you can actually extract the subtitles from your videos to be able Able to upload them uh, to uh, to YouTube so I'll cover that in another video there's a little teaser for you <laughs> it's also the same software that I use to make my podcast as well by the way so I haven't got much to learn with it I've just got to actually get into the habit of uploading my subtitles that also by the way helps with SEO apparently as well then we see my uh, the age and gender so 90.4 percent are male and 9.6 percent female and then the age range is, uh, the largest age range is between 35 and 44, uh, but shortly following that is 65 and over. Uh, so then some of them 18 to 14 years, and we haven't got any younger than that, but uh, my daughter doesn't show up on here, but the nine-year-old, I'm guessing, would have quite a big uh, feature here. And uh, then the 65 plus, that's probably accounted for by my parents as well. So <laughs> that might explain the spike there as well. So that is just interesting in terms of demographics because 
that at the end of the day is who you are speaking to and so it always helps to know who your audience is so that you can sort of bear that in mind when you are creating content so that really does now cover uh, the uh, analytics and I should just mention I've got it on the last 28 days which is what it defaults to but you can always drill down into uh, the last seven days and so on or the whole of a particular month or whatever uh, so you can have a look at how things have changed over different periods of times as well now what I'm going to do is come into the comment section which surprisingly enough is where all the comments are now what it is is it opens up into a uh, initially it's filtered them by things you haven't responded to and there you go I've got one that I haven't actually seen one minute ago from uh, Sammy Superstar and he really is. Hello, Sammy, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, well, I've, I'd nearly lost my train of thought then. I thought I was just about to start talking to you, but uh, who knows if you're even watching this. But uh, yeah, we had a good chat about uh, a great tip that you gave in office hours, but I'll mention it to you uh, another time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it filters them by messages that you haven't responded to first, which is handy. Uh, but then you can also remove that filter and uh, show you just all of the message, uh, all of the messages, and it will show you all of the messages. And uh, they're grouped by the video and that they were on and you can see the thumbnail of the video as well and then you can also just sort of reply to them uh, give them thumbs up or whatever and then there are also some tube buddy uh, features built in here and uh, specifically this is to do auto responses now i don't use auto responses but i can see how it could be a uh, a nice feature so there is canned responses uh, if you have got a uh, specific questions or things like that that people ask you on your channel a lot and you want to have some canned responses so that you can simply click a button and it will just fire it off to them then fair enough but personally I never really much for those it always comes across as a little bit uh, <laughs> unless it's unless it's something that is a you know long stock answer that you need to give I tend to prefer to just actually reply to people in general <laughs> so that is where you do all of that and also you've got an area here for if any have been held for review because they are spam or anything uh, then they'll come in here I haven't really had any in there as such so far so that is the uh, comments and where you handle those and you can do this all in the youtube studio app as well and also there is a tube buddy app as well so you can do it in there as well so i won't cover those in this because we're just looking at youtube studio aren't we so the next one we come to, down to is subtitles and in here uh, this is where you can uh, update your subtitles and uh, this as I say is something that I'm not really doing at the moment uh, but this is where you would do it and then the next one that we come down to is uh, the copyright section and again I haven't had any uh, copyright uh, notices in here but when I did <laughs> this is where they appeared and uh, not where they initially appeared but it's sort of the progress so if you query a uh, or challenge a copyright claim then you will uh, You'll, you'll see it in here and the progress as to how it's been resolved. Uh, so that appears in here. The next one is monetization. Now, obviously, with only just over 100 subscribers, I haven't actually uh, got to there yet. But it does give you this uh, cunning little... Uh, well, it's not really cunning, is it? It's a little clever <laughs> drawing. Uh, that's not the word either. Graphic... Uh, diagram <laughs> of how far I've just completely lost my words at the moment it gives you a little view of basically how far you are on your path to being monetized so 103 out of a thousand subscribers in this case and then also 288 public watch hours out of 4,000 required and then these little needles just obviously go up until you reach the uh, full amount and then they'll send you an email so uh, that is if you want to go and have a look that is in there and uh, who knows what will appear here uh, once uh, I've reached those numbers I'll have to come back and update you and see what appears in this section because I'm a little way off that at the moment the next one now this is really these ones are quite self-explanatory are they aren't they but customization is a good one to come to and so it is one that I want to talk about because I think that people sometimes neglect this one um so first of all you've got a uh and having said that people neglect it I do actually have to update this section as well so uh, just uh do uh, pick me up on it if I haven't done it in the not too distant future but first of all you've got video spotlight now when you are on your page if I go to my actual page 
forget this at the top. This is all just TubeBuddy analytics. Well, don't forget it. It's great. So if you are, if you do sign up to TubeBuddy, you get all of this uh, extra analytics about your site and how it's performing. Uh, but if I scroll down, you'll see that there's this video at the top. Now, this video at the top can be one of two videos and it is here where you select them. You have one which is a general channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed to your channel. So that needs to be something to sort of, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a proper trailer as such, but just something that's gonna give people an idea of what they're likely to find on your channel. And so if new uh, visitors come to your channel, uh, then that is what they will see. But then also you can have a featured video for uh, returning subscribers who are just visiting your page. So. Uh, I need to create something that is a bit more specific for my uh, new uh, non-subscribed viewers of my channel uh, and then maybe think about updating this video as well. But you can simply just go into options and uh, change the video or remove the video. Just have to drink, take a drink of water. And that is where you would uh, would do that. And that is a video, by the way, that you've uploaded and got in your uh, videos list. So next we come into the featured section. Now this is the bit that I got wrong <laughs> because I had been uploading videos and when you actually upload a video, in fact, let me just quickly show you. I won't go into the whole process of uploading a video because that is in itself another video. <laughs> but I will just quickly show you for the sake of uh, explanation of this. If I come into one of my videos and I go into edit, then you have a place where you can add to playlists and you can actually create playlists from there as well. So this video here, this one about backing up scenes in Ecamm Live, you can see that this is in uh, my Ecamm Live playlist and it's also in Quick Tips. But if I wanted to add an entirely new playlist in here, I could just click in new playlist and then write the name in and click OK and then I could add it to that. So these are the list of playlists that I have got. And as I've shown you already, when you are in your uh, playlists section, then you can see all of your playlists, can't you? Just like this. And when you have your end cards, you can actually add one of these playlists to your end card, as we've discussed already as well. Um, however, what I hadn't realized, very foolishly, <laughs> because I hadn't watched a video like this to tell me, is that uh, where you see people's pages, and they've got all of these different playlists like I've now got on my page, uh, you have to actually manually add those in. I know, who knew? Well, probably a lot of you, but I didn't. <laughs> so the way that you do that is here. Uh, if we come back to uh, customization and uh, in here, so these two will appear just as a standard it will just they'll just be blank when you first go into it so it will be quite evident that you need to add something into there now in the featured section it will feature short videos and uploads and uh, the rest will be blank and i had just assumed that when i added new playlists they would just appear there automatically but they don't you just have to click on add section and then here you can add uh, different things i've already got some of these uploaded so i've got my uploads my popular video shorts there they just appear there as standard but then uh, past live streams upcoming live streams so they are just a group that Facebook has uh, sorry YouTube has made but then you've also got these uh, playlists so I can click on that and then actually choose from one of my playlists just click on it and add it in there uh, like I say it's very obvious when you know how isn't it but I didn't know how for well until just last week in fact <laughs> and then I realized what I'd done and then you can also add different multiple playlists or you can add subscriptions so if you are subscribed to things through your channel then you can add those to the bottom so that people can see what you subscribe to what you as a channel subscribe to I use a, a different thing for my YouTube subscriptions to keep uh, so I don't actually use that one uh, but um, that is where you would do it if you were subscribed to other people's channels through your channel uh, and then also featured channels as well so you can feature other people's channels in there as well and that is how you build out that uh, you're basically your home page here so uh, that is uh, that is yeah your channel page that is how you do that so where are we from here by the way you can also go and view your channel so there is a link to it just to go and have a look at it uh, but the next section we've got in channel customization is on uh, branding so we click on that tab and here you can upload your logo. Uh, the next one is your banner image. Now, 
this one catches a few people out because it says for best results on all devices use an image that's at at least 2048 by 1152 pixels and six megabytes or less so people no doubt follow this and they think that they they've uh, got something that is exactly the right size and they upload it to youtube uh, to uh, youtube but then they don't realize that when they view it on the mobile it may be cropped and that's because there is a sort of safe zone in uh, in images now i still haven't done this but on a recent live stream i mentioned that i was going to upload a little uh, guide to my website which i'm just going to try and uh, pull up for you now because as I say there is this safe zone where things will be cropped in different ways on different devices and so there's a little box in the middle where you'll be perfectly safe to put any of your content but then anything outside of that you need to just beware now what I'm going to try and do is load this up because this is something that I actually prepared for uh, uh, another role that I have <laughs> uh, but it's a social media template pack and basically it's got sizes for all of the different images that you have for a uh, different profiles for different social media uh, uh, platforms like Facebook uh, also how to size your logo uh, getting your resolution right so that it doesn't wash out making sure that when it's cropped into a circle it looks right things like that uh, looking for profile pictures how to do those the different sizes the minimum sizes you should consider for those or how, how at least the display sizes for them uh, how to take cover images watching out for cropping but if I scroll through all of this as you can see this covers all of the platforms and shows you how you need to do it this is a document that I designed as I say for uh, another company that I have but this was the page that I wanted to quickly show you because if I zoom in on this, I should have been a bit more prepared really <laughs> for this particular part. But this is the part that you want to be pay attention to. So this is where it is saying that you want to have the image as 2560 by 1440. And that is because uh, that is how it will display on a TV. If somebody is watching this on their TV, your um, cover image on your um, page, uh, your channel will display at that size. But uh, desktop can be up to 2560, uh, 2580 rather, by four, uh, no, it is 2560. I can't even read my own uh, writing the way I've got this on the screen, uh, by 423. So this sort of letterbox style, anything within that will appear on the desktop, but only anything within the middle section, this 1546 by 423 pixels will actually appear on mobile devices. So you often see people where the uh, it, it obviously looked right on the desktop but then on the mobile there's like the edge of the logo cropped off or something like that so uh, what I've got to do is I've just got to upload this document to my website and actually make it a little bit more uh, my branding rather than my uh, company's branding <laughs> because I'm trying to keep these two things completely separate and we've got ones about uh, Instagram stories there as well and this is just my book that I wrote on social media marketing but uh, that's a story for another day as well <laughs> so that is why uh, you need to be careful about the images you're uploading because it doesn't really make it it doesn't tell you the full story here so uh, the next one down though is uh, assuming you've got your image right you can always click on this learn more by the way and it will give you more details but I know a lot of people don't always do that do they they read this part and then they just think yes I know what to do now the uh, next uh, part is the video watermark and what you'll notice hopefully as this video is playing is in the bottom uh, right hand corner you'll see my logo and that basically um, people can click on that and that will just take them through to the subscribe or subscribe them to the channel and you can choose to have that watermark on for the entire video or for just part of the video or at a particular start time as well so uh, that is where you would add that and I'd recommend having that on because at the end of the day as long as it's not too intrusive and I hope that uh, viewers don't find that too intrusive on my videos in fact you may not have even noticed it but it does help to have that there just for those that want to uh, just be able to click that to go and subscribe at the end of the day you want it to make it you want to make it easy for your viewers to uh, do that with your uh, channels uh, so the next thing we go to you definitely need to do all of these three is what I'm saying to you uh, the next one here is basic info 
Now this is where you can add in, surprisingly, some basic info, like your description. So on the top of your page, you will find, here it is, your description, not here, actually. <laughs> where is your description? It is in here, in your about section. I do beg your pardon. So in the about section of your channel, uh, you have a description. And that is this, the channel name, obviously, you can edit the channel name in here. Uh, and then you've got the uh, channel description is here and that will appear on that description page. You do have up to uh, a thousand characters, so I recommend using them because it does all help with uh, describing your channel, but also for, uh, for search as well. You've got your channel URL that you can copy from here at any time. Uh, you can't actually edit that until um, you, in fact, this is the standard one, but you can actually change your, it so that at the moment you can see mine is my very handy, easy to remember youtube.com slash channel slash UCPHGY2-F3M blah, blah, blah. So I obviously don't remember that. So I can just copy it from here. Once you've got a certain number of uh, followers, I believe you can, uh, change that to be a more handy take one tech, for example. Uh, but that comes a little bit later. You've also got these uh, links here. So you can add up to um, five links on your homepage. So if I come over to my homepage, you can see I've got my buy me a coffee there and then you can add other links as well. And so if you uh, come down to the links, you just simply click plus. And so you can just add a link in there. So I've added a link to my buy me a coffee page, which uh, in case you weren't aware was buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech and incidentally that is the best way to support the channel if you are finding what i'm talking about uh, useful and would like to support the channel then uh yep go to buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech and there are a couple of options on there either you can join my monthly subscription uh or you can uh just simply go and make a donation there and it just all helps to keep the lights on and keep the channel moving because there are costs associated with it but uh, that is the way if you felt like it that would be where you could do that so uh, that felt a little bit uncomfortable if i'm perfectly honest but there you go uh, that is where i added in those links and i've also added links into my uh, youtube uh, my sorry my uh, my website my instagram my link um uh, Facebook and other social profiles and things like that as well. So that is where you add those in. Uh, then you've got the choice of how many of those links you add to the banner. So as I say, it's up to five uh, of those, um, but you can just add just the first one or the first two or whatever. And so that is what will appear on your front page. Next, we have my uh, contact info. So you can just add an email address in there for people to be able to get in contact. And that covers about the basics of the basic information and the channel customization. And uh, once you've made changes, don't forget to come over here if you have made changes and click on this uh, pl uh, publish button to make sure you commit your changes. Next, we come down to audio library. Now I've talked about epidemic, but there is actually uh, discard your changes. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Um, Next, we come down to the audio library because there is actually audio built into YouTube, uh, into YouTube, <laughs> bit of a funny emphasis then. Uh, so here you can actually access uh, different uh, tracks and you can do search for uh, free music or sound effects and things like that. And this is obviously all YouTube safe music. So this is somewhere else you might want to look for the odd sound effect or odd tune um but there's not quite the range that you get at epidemic and what you also find is uh it's not quite as varied and people tend to have used these tracks quite a lot so uh, maybe there isn't quite the same originality there as if you find something uh, from an external source such as epidemic but this is nevertheless a great resource and so here you can see that there are in the audio library 994 tracks so certainly a lot to be going at so you may want to have a look at that first so that's the audio library. Now, right at the bottom, it doesn't look at though as it it does not look as though it's right at the bottom because uh, this window is quite zoomed in. But normally, this whole panel is sort of at the top, <laughs> and then there's a gap. And right down at the bottom, you've got uh, well at the very bottom, send feedback. So if you want to ever send feedback to YouTube, you can do that there. But there's also this panel here, and this is quite an important one. So click on settings, and this will load up a panel and there's a few different things here so first of all the uh, general so select the currency that you're working in uh, so that's 
pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the next one is uh, clicked on the channel settings. Now here is where you're going to add in some settings such as uh, country of residence and then also your keywords for your channel. So you can set keywords for the uh, individual videos but as you can see you can also set keywords for your channel. So that is very useful to help people actually find your channel through search. So make sure that you go through and add in as many as you can. Look at that, I've got 468 characters out of 500. So I've got uh, about 30 characters, 32 characters left <laughs> to put in another couple of uh, uh, links there or keywords there rather. So uh, yeah, definitely put in as many as you can to help people find your channel. As long as obviously they are relevant. Putting in irrelevant keywords, thinking that people will click on them uh, is only gonna hurt your channel. So they do all need to be relevant to what you are talking about. The next one is uh, advanced settings, so let's come into that. Uh, now, this one, do you want to set your channel as made for kids? Basically, under no circumstances would I turn that on. It does not mean is your uh, content sort of clean and free from free from expletives. <laughs> it does. It actually means is it specifically made for children and uh, I've heard a lot of people say who make you know YouTube videos for kids channels uh, that even if they are made for children it's still better to not uh, necessarily select that because it does put you into a completely different uh, uh, stream of uh, uh, checks and things like that for the content so uh, it can it can be uh, quite a challenge to do that uh, I'm guessing that most of the people that are watching my videos are not necessarily making uh, kids YouTube uh, videos anyway so I guess that needs to be just a no uh, you can also yes or no but you can also review it on a video by video basis but I've just set that to no the next one is automatic captions. So uh, do, don't do show potentially inappropriate words. So if you have uh, got, uh, uh, if you are talking and having Google auto caption, then uh, you can have it ignore potentially inappropriate words. But I've not bothered with that because I generally don't tend to uh, swear too much, at least not on the camera. <laughs> so the next one is... Uh, Adv advertising so disable interest based ads so uh, I'll just be clear on that because uh, I haven't selected that but if you select this option personalized ads will be not be shown on videos on your channel such as ads based on a viewers interests well I've not touched that first of all I'm not actually monetized so there aren't ads being shown on my videos yet but second of all I think if you are putting ads on your channel then they should be at least interest based because it's, it's more annoying, I think, to be shown an ad that is completely irrelevant than to be shown an ad that has some level of relevance. So if and when I do end up getting monetized, I'll still leave that on because it just uh, it makes sense. If people haven't opted out of uh, giving their data, then then, uh, yeah, I think it's probably better to just leave that as it is, really. So that is that. And then you can also click to manage your actual YouTube account from in here, which will take you into your YouTube account settings, surprisingly enough. And then the next one is feature edge eligibility. And there are a couple of things. So some things you need to uh, add in, like a phone for verification and things like that. Um, and so this shows you what you can do, obviously upload videos, uh, create playlists and things like that. And uh, so these are... Uh, basically, it tells you what the requirements are. Your channel is free of active community guideline strikes. So, uh, yeah, I've not uh, crossed any boundaries with mine so far. Uh, and then here we've got uh, phone verification for some things. So uh, custom thumbnails, live streaming and all that sort of stuff. But it's not really hard to get these sort of things. Uh, you just have to go through a couple of things. Like I say, phone verification and stuff like that. So that is the channel, but as I say, the uh, important one to watch out for on that is that you want to make sure that you have got your uh, tags for your channel uh, set. And then the next one we come down to is upload defaults. Now this can save you a bit of time uh, because what you can do in here is you can put in default settings for the videos that you up upload. Now all of my titles are different. I don't have a standard format to them, so I've just left that one blank. But the next one down is my uh, description. Now I do have some standard text that I pop pop at the bottom of every video such as you know links to uh, things that I use like my buy me a coffee link or my ecamm live free tutorial by the way 
If you are finding this video useful and would like to know how I managed it <laughs> all on my own, <laughs> then it's done with uh, Ecamm Live, which is a live video production environment that allows me to do all of this uh, sort of scene switching and things like that, sharing my screen and everything, uh, all through one single package and just record this all in one take. So where am I at the moment? I'm up to 58 minutes, nearly an hour. Well, well done for sitting through all of this. Um, but what it means is, if this video goes on for another, let's say 10 minutes, I'm nearly at the end, then it's taken me 10 minutes to produce it. I haven't had to go in afterwards and start thinking about editing or cutting stuff together or adding on uh, graphics or overlays or things like that. It's all just done in one take and uh, it's all done through Ecamm Live. If you want to get a free trial, go to takeonetech.com, uh, .io rather, <laughs> slash Ecamm Live slash Ecamm. Ecamm Live does work, by the way. I uh, set up both of those links. But yes, takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. I really messed that one up, didn't I? And uh, there you can get a free trial and give it a go because it really is uh, It's my favorite piece of software at the moment. <laughs> I really love it. It's got a great uh, community behind it as well uh, at the uh, Ecamm Live Facebook group. And the developers behind it as well, Ken and Glenn and the rest of the team there are just awesome at, uh, I find them very responsive to any questions and queries and uh, bug reports and things like that. And they're constantly rolling out new features, uh, but not at too great a rate, at just the right rate <laughs> without uh, bloating it with unnecessary features. They're uh, a great company and a great group of developers. So highly, highly recommend it. Uh, but anyway, in any case, coming back to uh, what I was talking about. That is why I have my link to Ecamm Live free trial in my description. And so this is just the sort of standard thing that I put in my uh, the bottom of every description. And this makes it easy because this is the upload defaults. It just appears in there automatically. And then I write the rest of my, rest of my description above it. You can also select the visibility. So whether it's a public, private or uh, uh, unlisted video, I just leave it as standard because it's more my videos are public to start with generally. Uh, and then you can also add in some tags for videos. I don't actually use this because um, I do add in my tags on a video by video basis because they're not all the same and there aren't necessarily some common ones that feature in everything. So I've left that bit like blank. But if you are just uh, making videos about the same stuff all of the time, then uh, that is where you would add some common tags in. So this is definitely another section that you should have a look at if you haven't already. And then you've also got uh, some TubeBuddy upload defaults as well. So uh, here you can uh, add in, uh, save these rather as uh, defaults, and then you can add these to, uh, to your vi videos when you come to upload them. Now the next one is permissions and this is really for if you're going to grant anyone else access to your uh, your channel. Maybe you want a VA, a virtual assistant, to go and add in all those chapter marks and then they'll be the ones that have to sit through your videos at double speed writing them all in. In fact that sounds like a good idea but uh, I don't think I'm quite at the level to be able to have a VA do all this for me just yet. <laughs> it needs to be uh, at least paying for that for, for, <laughs> for me to consider that but that is how you would do it. You would add uh, people to your uh, brand account to be able to change and do things in your um, your YouTube account. So the next section is community and this is a bit similar really. It's again granting people uh, permission and uh, so this is uh, the only ones I've got in here is actually restream.io and that's something I made a video about as well which I'll link to in the description and that is for uh, streaming to multiple platforms and so one of the things that that requests is access to this because uh, they basically collate all of your um, uh, chat messages uh, that occur during your live stream and feed them back and so part of the uh, part of the thing for that is that they have access to the the built-in comments from your side from within your account so that's why they have access here you also have some defaults here as well for your um, uh, comments so at the moment allow all comments but you could have it so that they get held for review so at the moment mine all get uh, posted but then also you could hold some for potentially if they are potentially inappropriate comments uh, or hold all comments for review so nothing gets posted to the comments until you have physically gone in and reviewed it uh, or disable comments if you don't want anyone to be able to comment but uh, I think my viewers are pretty uh, pretty well mannered so <laughs> I've left that as all comments. Now the next section is comments on your discussion tab so again that is the same sort of thing really uh, just comments that are on your discussions tab uh, as opposed to the ones on the individual videos. Uh, so discussions tab on your uh, page. Next, uh, messages in your live chat. So again, you can hold uh, those for review as well. 
So that is the community. And the next one is, I suppose, some little agreements from the uh, YouTube terms of service and things like that as well. So that is where you would find that. And that is sort of really covering uh, all of the uh, the basic functionality that you'll find in the right side. And those, three, uh, I guess, three things that are maybe not so obvious when you're browsing is to just go in your settings, make sure your group tags are set up for your, um, uh, sorry, your default information for your videos is set up and um, if you want to add in some tags in there as well uh, if you set up playlists then don't forget to go into your um, uh, uh, customization section and customize your page to make sure that those playlists are actually playing <laughs> in your your uh, your home page that's where you do that it's not really um yeah, you might think that that was in playlists, but no, if you want to add playlists to your your page, then it's in customization. These are the ones that sort of tripped me up or that I didn't realize straight away. But apart from that, that's about it. I think for adding a video, I'll do that in another video because there is a whole sort of section really on that and how you go about adding the videos and things to add in. And I'll share with you some of the tips that I've learned from TubeBuddy. And uh, <laughs> yes, you can find out the sorts of things that they will uh, they will recommend as well. So in terms of descriptions and titles and things like that. Well, there we go. We're at the end. I said that would be nearly another 10 minutes and I've probably cut myself a little short there. So uh, we're at one minute and five seconds, one, minute, <laughs> one hour and five minutes rather almost. So if you have found that useful and I just jumped the gun a little bit there, I was going to say, if you have found that useful, <laughs> then please don't forget to go and like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified of any future videos I make. And if you've got any questions about any of the sections or anything that I didn't cover or any little tips that you think that uh, I totally missed as well because as I say I'm still finding out these things myself we're all on the same uh, journey here of discovery at the end of the day so if you've got something that you can recommend that I haven't covered then please let me know in the comments or go to my website and let me know that way however you want to reach out I will always welcome your comments and feedback and now I really am going to go to my end screen so it once again, <laughs> thank you for joining me and you will know now that you're going to get your recommended video at the top and a playlist is going to come just down here at the bottom. Have a wonderful day.